Believe it or not, your photos aren't just about showing the product, although of course they also do need to do that, but they are also about triggering the right emotions when your customer sees them, communicating the key pieces of information that your potential customers need and answering any questions they might have. So the key to getting more sales from your product photos is to think about each photo as if it's a product description. You actually want to assume that people won't read the product descriptions. Too many sellers rely on what they say in the product description to sell their product, which can be a problem for multiple reasons. First, because in many cases, the shopper doesn't actually read it. <laughs> and second, many times the description is not easy to read on Etsy because only the first few lines are showing you have to click a read more button to see the rest this changes from time to time as Etsy changes how they display things on the platform but generally speaking the design of your listing is geared towards emphasizing the pictures not the description so instead of thinking of your photos as complementing your product description Think of your product description complementing your photos. The photos need to sell the product. They need to convince the buyer that your product is the one they want. And then later, when the buyer is really ready to purchase, they might go and read the product description for extra information. Which brings us to the two very important things your product photos must do. Trigger emotions and communicate information. How are you going to do that? Let's take a look. Step one, trigger emotions. At the most basic level, your photos need to showcase your product. But it's not just about showing your product, it is showing your product while creating a feeling. You want the shopper to picture themselves using your product, seeing it in their lives or in their homes, making an emotional connection with the idea of owning that product. Or if they are shopping for a gift, your photos need to help them picture the gift recipient using and loving the product. Your photos need to make them feel something. Think of the well-known saying, I feel, therefore I buy. I don't actually know who originally said this, but it's a very smart rework of the famous Descartes quote, I think, therefore I am. And the statement, I feel, therefore I buy, couldn't be more true. It has been proven by stacks of data and research that our emotional brain is really what drives the purchases that we make. So how are you going to trigger emotions with your photos? Well, you're going to do it the same way that you do when you write a product description. You may have heard before that you don't just want to list a bunch of features that your products have in your descriptions. You want to turn those features into benefits, right? Your pictures need to do the same. They need to show the benefits of using your products. The benefits can be something practical like decluttering or organizing your house. So if you sell organizer boxes, your customer will have less clutter in their house and that's a practical benefit. But the benefit can also be something that doesn't necessarily have a practical value. Sometimes products provide an emotion or a feeling, which is the case for many of the products that you guys are probably making. I know many sellers who I work with always say to me, but Deb, my product isn't useful. It's not something people need. It's just pretty. <laughs> and my friend, that counts too. For these types of products, it might not be something they need, but it's certainly something they want. Maybe it's something that makes your shopper feel confident, strong, or pretty, or maybe it makes them feel like their house is cozy, welcoming, warm, or stylish. So how are you going to create those emotions in your pictures? There are a few things that you can do. Let's look at a couple of examples together. First, let's look at this picture of some really clever drawer dividers. In this photo, you don't really see the product all that well. What you're seeing is the actual dresser, the rug, the hand, and all the little clothes in the divider. So it's not like a zoom in on the actual product that you'd be getting, but you see what it helps achieve, which is much, much more powerful. You see a less cluttered drawer for your kid's bedroom or whatever it is that you're organizing, and you feel less overwhelmed and more peace. You can literally feel the satisfaction that you would feel if you opened that drawer. This experience is something that you can replicate in the photos you take for anything that you sell. Now, I was just saying, I often hear from sellers who sell decor items or art saying, you know, my product doesn't have any benefit. It's just pretty, there's no purpose. So how do I sell that in the photo? So now I want to look at a second example in which the product doesn't have a practical function, but is more something that you would buy because it's pretty or it looks good. <laughs> in cases like this, you really want to tap into using lifestyle images and props around your products instead of just a plain background or a white background. You cannot sell successfully and keep beating your competition if you don't invest in lifestyle props and models and use them to create your photos. Everyone is doing it and now customers expect it. 
You'll use lifestyle images to recreate an emotion and help the potential customer picture themselves feeling a certain way and the product feeling fitting sorry, into their lives or the life that they want to have. So let's take a look at this example of a listing for a pretty plant basket. I want you to notice all the things in this picture that don't come with this basket when you buy it. They are these super healthy plants, they look so much healthier than mine. The couch behind with a beautiful assortment of multicolored pillows. The super cute little table and the lovely ray of soft sunshine that's hitting the plant just right. All of these details create a feeling when you look at the photo. The feeling doesn't come with what you're buying. But what you're buying is the opportunity to create the same feeling in your house. Because if you buy this and put it in your living room, you can create a similar experience for you and your guests when you have people visit your house. So if your photo accurately represents what your ideal customer wants their house to look like, you're actually selling them the vibe of the room in your picture and the feeling someone gets when they are in the room, even though you're just selling them this one plant basket. The same is true for art pieces, wall hangings, and really any product in the art or decoration niche. It might not have a practical purpose other than being pretty and making people feel at home, but that's a huge emotion you need to tap into by using the correct props, mock-ups, the correct styling on your images, all those details. You need to remember that you're not selling home decor, you're selling how the decor will make the house feel. So. Whatever you're selling, the questions you want to ask yourself are why would someone be interested on an emotional level in buying my product? And how do they want to feel when they're using or seeing my products? And then you want to reproduce that with lifestyle photos, props that you use around your item, etc. Once you've hooked the potential customer and ticked the box of triggering their emotion, the second step is to simplify the decision process for them using photos that answer customer questions. This is about answering questions that your potential customers might have and communicating key features of your product. And it's something that way too many sellers only do in the product descriptions. Remember, we're imagining that they're not going to read the product description. And so you're asking yourself, what is the most important information that you need to communicate with your pictures instead to potential customers? One way to do this is to look at your product description and highlight the parts that might be helpful to explain visually in your pictures, such as key features of your product or processes that might be a little confusing to order, for example. Remember, your photos don't have to only be product photos. You can mix photos, photos with notes and arrows highlighting certain product features, as well as graphics that illustrate important details. So let's look at a few examples together. The first one here is uh, an adorable nursery decor product. Now, when you first see this product, you might be wondering which animals can I choose from and can I add any name I want? And then you might also want to know how does it work? Like, am I going to need batteries? Do I plug this into the wall? Like questions about how it actually is going to work. And instead of leaving that information in the description, the seller helps you by creating these graphics mixed with photos. The first picture clearly shows you that you can choose six different animal designs for your nightlight. And then it shows where the personalized baby's name would be added. It's visually telling you things that would actually be really hard to say with words in your print description. Plus, it's branded and it's cute, so it keeps triggering all the right emotions, but also serves the function of conveying important information from the product description. This next picture shows you the back of the clock. Now, of course, no one goes through the product pictures to look at it from the back. Like, no one really cares about what it looks like from behind, right? But what this does is show you the power options. So the shopper who sees this will be thinking, hey, cool, I can use a battery or I can use a micro USB cable. So they know that they have those two options to power the nightlight. The next photos is literally answering the question, what's in the box? So you see that it does come with the actual micro USB cable, which is especially handy if it's a gift because you don't have to worry about the recipient not being able to use it when they open it. You also see in this picture that it comes with a cute little card that can be sent to the receiver directly. So this is telling you a lot of things that you then don't really need to read again in the product description. Photos can also be used to simplify a process. So let's look at a couple of order process examples. First is a photo from a listing for personalized gift boxes. When you're deciding what you need for your photos, you also want to be mindful of situations where 
The order requires a few steps and how you're going to make that super clear to your shoppers. In this example, the product being sold is a build your own gift box. So you get to pick the items that go into it. So there's a process involved in ordering and you can lose people as in lose customers if it's not super clear how they choose options and place the order. This graphic does a really nice job because it tells you exactly how the order process actually works. As you can see, this is not a photo, it's just a graphic uploaded as a photo. The process is very clear. First, you personalize your card and you choose a base gift box. Second, you add items to the cart that you want the gift box to contain, and then you check out. If you were to look in the product description, you'd see that it's very short and essentially says the same thing that I've seen in a picture. So it nicely complements what the pictures already tells me and makes me feel confident as a customer that, hey, okay, this is pretty clear and straightforward. I'm not getting lost in the ordering process here. Our second example probably have different products than necklaces or nightlights, and you're wondering how can you determine what information you need to convey to your shoppers in your product photos. The best way to figure that out is to reverse engineer the process. You don't want to just take pictures then hope that they have all the right information, feelings and emotions needed to sell your products. You want to first start away from your camera and write down what kinds of information your customer is going to need. Ask yourself, is there anything my customer might need help with? Are there any product details I can show with my pictures, like the photo of the nut light that showed there were battery and USB power options at the back? Can I simplify the order process and make options super clear using graphics or pictures that highlight the different options and variations, such as color, length, shapes, things like that? You want to list anything you can think of that might create doubt or confusion in the customer's mind and get in the way of the purchase decision. Because if you leave them with any kind of doubt about the product or the ordering process, they're not going to purchase. So what kinds of things can cause doubt? It's like little things like how long is this necklace really going to be? Will this product be the right size? Will I need to use batteries for this? These are the little questions that you need to answer with your photos. So add them to the list you're making. Next, go to your product descriptions and highlight the most important parts and write that down on that list as well. Then you look at that list and come up with a plan to answer those questions using photos and graphics. Don't forget that your photos can use graphics as well. They're super handy and you should totally be using them. You can have a picture that's actually just a graphic like we've seen in a previous example, or you can use text on your photos to point at things with cute little arrows to show size and add information to your product photos. Your goal is to answer questions and to make the purchase decision really easy for your customer. You want to make them feel confident that they're getting what they think they're getting and that's what your pictures really need to do. In the next few weeks, we are going to be talking about even more photo tips and secrets, including how to pick props for your product photos and how to tell when your product photos need a refresh. So you will want to click subscribe below so you get a notification when those videos come out. Now you may also want to learn other strategies for getting more sales on Etsy. And I have a really helpful video showing on your screen right now that will give you 10 tips to get more sales on Etsy. So be sure to watch that next. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check the links below and until next time, au revoir.